What up, fellas? What up, fellas? What up, fellas? How's everybody doing this evening? It's your man in the building, bro. The Shave Lion King, bro. And I'm just coming here just to chat with y'all today, man. It ain't nothing serious, bro. I just wanted to check up and see how many of y'all out there today were celebrating Valentine's Day. Come on now. I know most of you guys out there are in relationships. So I just want to ask, how are you celebrating your Valentine's Day? You know, I saw a lot of crazy things today, bro. I was at work and I saw a lot of guys, bro, putting a lot of energy, a lot of effort, a lot of thought into this Valentine's Day. And it put me back in the mindset, bro, of back when I was in a relationship. And I started to look. As you guys know, I'm on retention, bro. I'm on a streak of two years, man. I'm up on this God mode. I'm, I'm looking back at my life. And I'm remembering all these things that I used to do. And Valentine's Day was one of them. And the biggest thing that I noticed about all of these guys today, bro, is they were on an emotional roller coaster. Now, let me ask you guys something. Let me ask you guys something. I'm going to, I want the truth and I just want somebody to tell me the truth, bro. How many men out there, bro, really honestly think that they can control they would? Okay. How many men out there honestly think that they can really control they would? And the reason why I ask you this is this. If that was the case, would you be in a relationship? Would you be in a marriage? Would you be in a situationship where you would be giving your energy away to the absolutely nothing? Now, this is the question I want to ask you. I want to ask you for real. If this was the case, would you be in a relationship? And I don't even need to have anybody ask, you know, answer that question because I already know the answer. And the answer is no. See, here's the problem. Most guys, especially in 2024, are in these relationships to fill some kind of void, okay? 
And what that void is, they want to at least try to correct themselves by walking on the right path, by not indulging into self-pleasure, okay? Because this is what it's all about. If you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me that if SEX, if intimacy, if being intimate with a woman was not something that came with the relationship, would you be in that relationship? And the answer is no. I already know the answer, like I said, because I was in a relationship once. And now that I'm not, I sit back and I analyze every single thing that I went through. And I started to put it into perspective. And I started to see that there was no way that I would be in a relationship if intimacy wasn't on the table. So the question asked again is how many men out there really can control their wood? And most men can't because this is why they are in fact in relationships, okay? Because they can't, which leads me to my next point. Most of these men that are in a relationship out here, bro, are getting into these relationships, okay? And what they're starting to discover once they get into these relationships is they start to start to see that they have weaknesses. Most men lose their frame in a relationship because what ends up happening is your wife, your girlfriend, the person that you're dealing with ends up draining you, thus turning you into a weak man. And this is a major issue with our men. This is why we're having such a crisis in the United States, because most men out here have absolutely no control. All right. And they try to hide themselves in these relationships. And we already know what is the most popular thing that single men do, which is self-pleasure. So now imagine if they weren't in relationships, bro, all right, what kind of indulging they would do. And this further drives my point, how most men that are in relationships do not have wood control or they would not be in a relationship. And I broke the point down perfectly because would you be in a relationship if SEX was not on the table? And the answer is no. So for this point alone, bro, it shows me in our society way men are thinking and men are all thinking with their little head, bro. I had a guy come into my work today. Okay. He happened to be the director of a casino, a very large casino out here in Spokane, okay? It's a native tribe, you know, casino. And he got to sit in there and he got to talking to me today. And he was telling me on how he doesn't do anything here in the States anymore. He takes all of his business into other countries. He had just told me that he had just got back from Thailand. And when he was in Thailand, he was treated like a king. He said when he was in Thailand, he said that there was 20 girls to every single man. He said his father, who was an older gentleman in his 70s, who could not even get the time of the day in the States, ended up going to Thailand and getting married within a year to a woman who was almost 17 years younger than him. This is what I want you guys to see. This is what I want you guys to understand that most of us here, in fact, are being told to be in relationships. And this is not something that we really need to do. <laughs> Hence, Valentine's Day. As I said, I sat back and I looked today at everything that I went through, at everything that I put out to only continue to have the toxicity that came with relationships show its face after special dates like this. Let me ask you guys another question. Since most of you guys have been in relationships, right? Had Valentine's Day ever made a difference for you in your relationship? Did it make or break your relationship? And I can, and again, answer that question myself because I know what the answer is. And the answer is no, it's never make or break your relationship. So my question to you is if it never made or break your relationship, why do you put so much effort and energy into this date when you know it's just a normal date? Okay. 
what this day actually really means is I'm about to play a short clip of a video for you guys and show you the true origins of Valentine's Day, okay? And I want this to put in perspective on everything from us being into relationships to celebrating this day to putting our energy into these dates, okay? And we not knowing what these origins of the things that we are doing. Okay, so let me play a little clip briefly for you guys. One second. You got a recent. It was uh, Valentine's Day yesterday. That is a day of love. That is love day. You have to have. Man, they made like that. that. They made that issue. You think so? It's a scam. I know so. So it's a scam. Yeah, and you fell for it. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't fall for it. I included rites aimed at ensuring fertility and warding. Valentine's Day started as a pagan festival steeped in mysterious rituals and fertility rites. The transformation of Valentine's Day from its dark origins to what we experience today is a fascinating journey through history, beginning with the ancient Roman festival of Lupercalia. Held from February 13th to 15th, this festival honored Faunus, the Roman god of agriculture, and included rites aimed at ensuring fertility and warding off evil spirits. The most striking aspect of Lupercalia was its bizarre rituals, which were a far cry from today's exchange of love tokens. The ceremony commenced with the sacrifice of goats and a dog, symbolizing fertility and purification. Luperci, or priests of Faunus, would then fashion whips from the animal's hides, soaked in sacrificial blood. These whips were used to gently strike women and agricultural fields, a practice believed to enhance fertility and ease childbirth. As the Roman Empire embraced Christianity, the pagan undertones of Lupercalia were at odds with the new religious ethos. In the 5th century, Pope Gelasius I sought to supplant Lupercalia with a celebration more in line with Christian values. He designated February 14th as a feast day in honor of Saint Valentine, a Christian whose acts of kindness and defiance against Emperor Claudius II's marriage bans had earned him a place in history. Though St. Valentine was martyred by Claudius for continuing to marry couples despite the ban, his association with love gradually overshadowed Lupercalia's original traditions. This historical pivot from Lupercalia to Valentine's Day underscores the enduring human fascination with love and the lengths societies go to celebrate and ritualize it. As we prepare to celebrate Valentine's Day, let us reflect on its rich and varied history. May this understanding inspire us to cherish and honor the loves in our lives with a renewed sense of appreciation for the journey love has taken through the ages. This is the dark truth behind Valentine's Day that nobody is talking about. Valentine's Day was originally a Greek and Roman celebration called Lupercalia. And on this holiday, it was used to celebrate the god named Pan. How they celebrated this holiday is they would 187 goats and dogs and walking in the streets clobbering women with the dead skins of the animals they sacrificed. They would come together and put their names in a hat, and the name that they pull out of the hat, they would have a cheek clapping session. How they changed the name from Lupercalia to Valentine's Day is this man that's sitting behind me right here. Yeah, St. Valentine's, which was a saint that was protecting the young people of Rome spiritually by getting them married. And the Roman Catholic Church didn't take too fond of that because they didn't want their man becoming too weak by getting married. And because of them actions, he was 187. And somehow they took him being martyred and made that a holiday. Be aware who y'all give y'all energy to on these holidays. So there you have it. You heard the origins for yourself, okay, about this date that we celebrate and we have no idea of why we celebrate it. Okay. The reason this is even celebrated is because it's a ritual to harness energy. Let me ask you guys a question. Okay. I'm going to ask you a serious question. Everybody knows, everybody knows what happens on Valentine's day. Okay. Everybody knows. Okay. You get your significant other a gift. You get your significant other, some candy, some flowers, you head home and you end up making some kind of ritual out of your intercourse, right? So let me ask you a question. If they, if you know that this is what they target every single year on a specific date, and you know that sexual energy is the most powerful energy on the planet, 
and they have everybody doing this on this date. Okay. Not only that, wearing the colors, the black, the red, the sacrificial colors. Okay. Do you understand what it is that you are putting your energy into? You guys, I've done a lot of research on this and I'm not going to go diving deep and I'm not trying to ruin anybody's night. But the question and the little things that I want you to see is I want you to see that everybody, okay, on a specific date is having the sacred energy exchange, all while using ritualistic colors, blood, and you just heard what the origins of Valentine's Day and where it comes from, okay? And they're having us all do this on the same date. What is the other thing that they just passed last week or a few days ago, okay, that they also had a ritual right in front of 200 million people, which was the Super Bowl, okay? Now, that is an energy, okay? That is an energy, but it is nowhere as powerful as the sexual energy exchange, okay? We, we know what this power consists of. It brings life to this planet. So every year at this time, they are literally harnessing people's energy, okay? Literally, by having us all ritualistically, like I said, we're all in the colors, we're, we're buying the candies, the chocolates, which we don't understand what they symbolize, all right? And we're having ritualistic intercourse with our significant others, okay? And we are not the ones that are benefiting from this energy, you got to understand, it's just like things like mass meditations. When you have that many people all conceding to do the same thing, that's a lot of energy being directed to who knows where. And this is all I'm trying to do is raise, raise awareness to this situation, okay? Because this time, I'm not going to be taken apart this time, okay? This is the first time in a very long time, okay? But I've, I've, I've had couple other times in my life where I haven't taken a part in this ritual. But the simple fact of the matter is I am not doing it this time. And it's a reason why. Okay. We have to start using our heads, guys. We start to start opening our third eyes and seeing that these things that society is having us do have alternate agendas. Okay. And this is has this is no way a conspiracy. This is common sense. Go go look at the information yourself and understand that all of these things that I'm telling you are true. Okay. So it's a reason why things like this are happening. Okay. And I just want to bring awareness to it. I'm not ruining anybody's day. Celebrate your holidays. Okay. Celebrate whatever it is that you want to do. It's your life. But someone needs to shed a little bit of light on why would everyone, okay, be taking a part on this date and they're doing a ritual, a sacred ritual, which is S-E-X, all on the same day. And you don't think that there has any other alternative motives of why everybody is doing this on this date. That's all I want to say to you guys, okay? I'm not trying to drag this out. I just want some of you guys to think about what's going on because I've been doing the research on this for a while, man, and it makes no sense to me. Okay. I have my thoughts on it, but I'm not going to put my thoughts on you guys. I want you guys to do your own research and see that there's alter motives. Okay. To this holiday. All right. And you got to understand they are all having people use the most powerful energy on this date. Okay. This is bigger than Christmas guys. This is bigger than any other date. People are all putting their sexual energy, the most powerful energy on the planet, guys, okay, all on the same date, all right, that is powerful, okay, we're talking about millions and millions and millions and millions of people, let alone how much Valentine's Day makes off of profits, just off of candies, okay, and you got to think about all the other things that are attached to that, all right, so it's a reason why these things are going on, and I just want you guys to, you know, look at it from an open mind, okay? Do your research, all right? And just see, is this something that you don't notice, okay? And is it something that you want to continue to take part in when you're not knowing what you're doing, 
Okay. It's like almost being um, at the wrong place at the wrong time. You might not understand that you're, you're doing something that could have negative impacts on you and yourself and your loved one. Okay. Like you could just be at the wrong place at the wrong time with a friend. And you just thought you were hanging out with your friend. Turns out your friend went in there and, and robbed the bank. And then now you, you're driving your friend away in the getaway car. Okay. You don't even know that you're the getaway car. Okay. This is the same thing. It's the same implications. Okay. Just because you can't draw that connection. Okay. Doesn't mean it's not true. It's the same thing. You're taking part of something and you're not knowing what you're taking part of. Okay. When we just played you the origins. Okay. That is very, very powerful. Okay. And that is something that we need to open our eyes to because many of us are being misled. And if that's what you want to continue to do with your life, by all means, you have the choice to make that decision. Okay. I'm only here to enlighten you and try to shed light on the situation because I am infatuated with knowledge. That's what I like. I like to study. I like to dive deep on topics. I like to know what's really going on. And I feel like that's my duty, okay, as a, as a content creator, as a mentor, as a leader to pass on this information to others who might not have discovered this yet. <clears throat> Valentine's Day is very superficial. Facts, bro. And listen, I'm not trying to say it's a bad thing, bro. I'm not trying to say you can't celebrate it. I'm not trying to say anything negative. I just want you to see for what it is, okay? I want you to start thinking. This is what we do over here. We talk about how powerful our sexual energy is. We talk about the power of sex transmutation, okay? We talk about the power of holding our seed, all right? Now, if you were to think about it, if you're ritualistically having everybody on this specific date per, you know, participate in this act, Imagine how much energy that is, okay? Imagine. We're so powerful alone by ourselves. Now, imagine getting the collective to take part in this date and the harvesting of energy that is going to be taking place. It's something that I really want you guys to really dive into and start to understand. And it's red. What does that tell us? Facts, bro. And it's like I said, it's I'm not the way I handle holidays in my life these days. I just try to make the best of them. But what my thing is, is I want to know about what I'm doing first. Therefore, I can go in it with a mindset that this isn't real. OK, I'm not going to take part in things that, you know, might not benefit me. OK. I'm going to oversee it from a different eye, okay? This is the same thing that I do with Christmases and, 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 and Thanksgivings, okay? Because they all have their origins. And I challenge each one of you to dive into the origins of each one of these holidays, okay? Well, like I said, but this one is the most powerful because this one you're having the collective as a whole using the most powerful creative energy all on one night, all on one day, okay? And the, the fa simple fact that we're all wearing ritualistic colors during this time, okay, you can look at a lot of things that these Hollywood people do, okay, when, they, when they're um, doing rituals in front of us, it's always black and red, okay? So all I'm telling you is that this is a most powerful day that energy is being harvested because it's our most powerful energy. It's our sexual creative life force energy. OK, and we're all doing this on one day. So imagine someone sitting back knowing this and the type of energy that is in our environment, in our atmosphere because of the vibrations that are being put out. It's something to think about, OK, because it's really true and it's really happening. Valentine's Day and Christmas, both red facts. And that's all I'm trying to say. OK, I'm, that's all I'm trying to say. I'm just bringing light to the situation, guys. OK, it's something that you really need to think about. And it's something that you really need to ask yourself. What have we been doing all these years on this date and un unknowingly taking part in 
you know, rituals, taking part in things that probably have added negativity to our lives. Because I know this, most of us have been in and out of relationships. And that's why I asked you early, does Valentine's Day make or break a relationship? And the answer is no. And the reason we know why it's no, because most people don't last in relationships anyway. So it was never a make or break thing. Okay. I just want to ask you guys on a serious, serious level, bro. Why are you doing the things you do? And if you don't know why you're doing the things you do, you need to open your third eye and look into why you're doing the things that you're doing without knowing why you're doing them. Okay. That is the importance. Okay. That's like being an accomplice and not knowing that you're being an accomplice. Okay. That happens to innocent people all the time. And this is the same thing that's happening with these holidays that we celebrate. Okay. Mainly, like I said, Valentine's Day, because Valentine's Day is the biggest day where you're harnessing the most energy, harnessing all this uh, creative sexual energy. Okay. That is uh, something to note. And that is something to investigate. Okay. This is probably one of the biggest secrets out there, okay? But you have to understand, as a practitioner of retention, retaining your life force energy, and going on our journey and understanding the power of our sexual energy, you should know how big of a date this is, and I shouldn't have to explain it to you, and it should not be going over your head. You should have a pretty well indication, okay, on what kind of energy is brought about on this date, okay? And that's just something I want you to be aware of. It's one big sex societal ritual. Thank you. Finally, we got somebody that is awake and seeing it for the situation for what it is. Okay. And that's exactly what it is. Okay. And what makes me even more a little bit irritable about it is the simple fact that men are so weak today that they buy into it. Okay. Men are so weak today that they're buying into it. Let me ask you guys another question. Since I said that men are weak today and they buy into it, let me ask you, does, is society full of weak men? Is that what we have today? Is society full of weak men? Okay. It has to be. Okay, because like I said, most men, bro, are in relationships. And if you were just to take sex out of the equation of a relationship, would those men still be in the relationship? And the answer is no. So this begs my next question. Do men have wood control? And they don't. Thus, they're being in relationships, compensating, hiding their addiction, hiding the discipline that they need to forego in their lives, hindering their own lives, okay, by being in these relationships. I'm not saying the women are bad. What I'm saying is men are weak because men have yet to face their demons, Okay, they're using the scapegoats, they're using relationships, they're using pornography sites, okay, to escape their addictions, to escape in their realities. Because I just told you, if there was no intimacy apart attached to the relationship, would you as a man be in that relationship? And the answer is no, you wouldn't. Okay. So this, can, this, this proves strictly alone that it's all about wood control and men in relationships don't know it, but they don't have wood control. They don't have discipline, okay? Because they get into these relationships and they end up losing themselves, okay? Most relationships fail. Most marriages fail, thus equaling a waste of time, I'm not telling you the opposite sex is a waste of time. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is for the simple fact alone that men in modern day times are in relationships to hide their addictions, to run away from their demons, okay, to celebrating these holidays and giving their energy away without knowing what it is that they're doing symbolizes that we have weak men in the society. When I just told you, like, back in the olden days, men would explore, men would travel, men would go to war, men would do, build, and create. Men weren't overindulged. Yes, they did have their ties, but 
not to the day that we have today. Like I said, men would, would could have up to two women at one point. Okay. They would marry like that. Okay. So with a simple fact that today we have men that find themselves in these situations, you guys, lets me know one thing and lets me know one thing only that we have a weaker society of men who are refusing to work on themselves because if they did, they would not be tied down to most of these relationships. Most of these people settle. We talked about this in a previous stream. Okay. This is what, this is the big picture. Okay. And I want you to understand as a man that you have so many more options. You're a man. You don't have to be settled down or tied down, but the reason you settle down or tied down is because you're hiding, you're hiding addictions, you're hiding demons. If a man goes on retention, this last thing that he is chasing is a relationship. Oh, the only thing that he's looking forward to is his goals, becoming someone super important, becoming a leader in society. That is what a man is driven to do when he's retaining his seed. But see, when men end up in relationships, they end up becoming weak. You just heard in that uh, video that I played that the, the king at one point did not want men to be married because men become weak. So this isn't something that I'm making up. This is a fact. And I've proven it to you, the simple fact that men have no wood control. They get in these relationships, they lose themselves. They become very weak. They end up releasing to their wives, their girlfriends every single day. And all that does is create an imbalance in power. You see, when you start doing stuff like that, and then now she's got control of you, okay? She's got control of you emotionally and physically, all right? And you become drained. And then you fall into the trap because you become one of these men who are, are released, who are highly sexed every single day. You leave your, your house to work every single day with an empty sack. You know this is true. Most, most women will do this. And why do you think that they do this? And it's and again, this is not attacking anyone. This is just showing you on how you've lost your way as a man and you don't understand the power and the drive that you have to conquer. Instead, you're settling, okay? You're being tied down. You're being taken out of the game. This is a huge game of life, all right? And you have the possibilities to do anything that you want to do, okay? I just sat there and told you that, I, I, I cut in the director's hair of the casino and he just told me he just got back from Thailand and there was 20 girls to one man, 20. Okay. 20. They're not marrying any of these girls. Okay. They're not settling down, you know, and, 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 and getting caught up in a cycle of becoming weak because you fall into the pattern of trying to, you know, please and hide your addictions. When all you need to do is become that man that you are, put some hair on your chest, okay? Put some discipline in your life, control your outcome, and you will be able to be anything that it is that you want to be. You, The last thing that you would be looking at, as I promise, is any of these girls trying to tie you down in a marriage or a relationship. Because now your eyes are open and you realize your power and you realize on how everything is literally a trap. That right there is the beauty of it, okay? And again, I'm just another piece of the puzzle that I'm exposing to you and shed, shedding a light on to get you to understand that every single thing that we do revolves around our sexual energy. This is why they want us to do the things that they want us to do. This is why society is the way that it is because everything around us revolves off of this energy. It's the most powerful energy. And the minute you decide to redirect that energy as a man, take your life seriously, okay? You become a true bro, a true pioneer, a true gladiator, okay? You, your mission is to get to the top. Your mission is to be fulfilled. And you know that parking yourself Anchoring, anchoring yourself somewhere, okay, being constantly depleted, controlled, okay, makes you weak, okay, and you guys know this, and this is no disrespect to any of you guys that are married, there's no disrespect to any of you guys that are in relationships, all this is is an enlightenment session to get you to understand that there's much more to life than the life it is that you are leading, okay,
what you need to be doing is you need to be trying to be the best that you can be. And how you become the best that you can be is by practicing holding the most strongest energy for you. Okay. That energy is there for you to complete your goals, to complete your purpose. That's what that energy is there for. It's not there for, for you to get into a relationship. And I just sat there and told you that if sex wasn't a part of the, the, the equation that you wouldn't even be in the relationship. So what does that say about your relationship in general? That you don't need it and that you don't really want it. But since you have addictions and needs that you think that need to be fulfilled, these gratifications, these things that society has put into your head and has misled you as a man, and now you cannot be that conqueror who every man is meant to be, told you we're the prize, but you forgot, okay? And now you're powerless. So now what has happened is you've lowered, you've lowered your value as a man by being in these relationships. And that's why you end up coming with all the emotional roller coasters that come with that. Okay. You lose yourself. All right. And I'm not, again, I'm not sitting here and telling you not to do it. That's not what I'm sitting here to do. What I'm doing is enlighten you. So the next time you do run into this problem, the next time you do see these things coming up and these issues coming up, you'll be able to make a smarter and wise decision. But the truth of the matter is you would be able to make this own decision on your own if you were taking this journey seriously, because all the messages are all inside of your head. You can answer every single question that you could ever have. But the problem is you're too low on energy to complete this task. All right. And this is why they have us do relationships, marriage, indulge in corn you know, they promote all these sexual imagery all over society. It's a reason why they do that because it creates weak men. And when you have a weak man, guess what? You have a society that is probably much more easier to conquer and take over. Hence the situation that we're all living in right now. We don't want to pay our bills. We don't want to go to work. We're, we're being underpaid, being overworked. Okay. When we have Okay, our rights as human beings, okay, which men were mostly on the front line when it came to this battle, okay, unfortunately, we don't have that anymore. And now what we're doing is we're dealing with repercussions of having a weak male society, okay? Males in our society are going backwards. They're, they're devolving backwards, okay? They're becoming weak, depleted. They're not warriors anymore. They don't stand up for what it is they believe. Okay. They're all in relationships, thus, where they are being undervalued, depleted, and discarded. Okay. But instead, if you just retained your seed and you took life seriously, bro, you could be that God. You could be that king. You could have whatever it is that you want. You could create any lifestyle that you want, bro. That right there is the life I want to leave in 2024 and beyond. I'm leaving behind all this stuff the society has done been teaching us, okay? And I want you guys to see it with an open eye. That's all. Bunch of low vibrational spirits flying around today. Facts, bro. And it's all energy harvesting, okay? This is what you got going on out here. It's all energy harvesting, okay? Again, just broken down to you how powerful sexual energy is. Y'all know this because this is all we talk about. Y'all know this because you know how you feel as a man when you've released yourself. You know how you feel, okay? You feel weak and tired, okay? Now, imagine being anchored down, okay? Thinking that you are doing the right thing, bro, okay? But you never getting to be who whatever, whoever it is that you really want to be in this world. Why? Because you have obligations, OK, your obligations are to now provide for somebody else, which I get. Like I said, this I have nothing against guys that are doing this. You choose a life that you want to choose. All I'm doing is enlighten you to the situation and to the other options that you have in your in your life that you don't think you have. OK, 
we're in a part, we're in a system here in the States. Okay. We're in a program. Okay. And everything that they have us do is a part of this program from the jobs to the religion, to the TV that we watch, to the music. Okay. To the marriages, to the relationships. Okay. To the way things happen in court. It's a program, bro. Okay. And if you fall too deep in this program, you can never recover. You'll be one of these guys that end up one off themselves. You'd be one of these guys end up losing his mind. You'd be one of these guys that end up in jail. You'd be one of these guys that be seriously depressed. When I'm sitting here telling you that the key to this whole thing, to destroy this whole system as a man, as a man, I can't tell you what to do as a woman, but as a man to destroy this whole system, all you got to do is retain your seed and say, no, don't become weak, become strong, gain your confidence back. Okay. Become smarter. All right. Have this independence about you where you don't need attachments. You understand that attachments are just energy harvesters that are in your energy that are trying to slow you down from your ultimate objective. And your ultimate objective as a man is like I said, is to conquer point blank period. I didn't say dominate. I said conquer. I said explore. Okay. Travel. Understand that, you know, females are, you know, are, they're plentiful in this world. Okay. And only here in America, you decide to tie yourself down in situations that you don't want to be in that end up hindering your growth and permanently stunting you because you chose to believe in what it is that they're pushing out here. All right. I just got, I told you in one of the previous slides, why didn't they create the male birth control first? And if that's the case, why don't they give us the choice? Okay. Because I told you the system does not work without it being the man is the one who is getting it the worst. Okay. That's the way it works because it's all about controlling and taking over. Okay. It's all about creating a society of weak men. And this is why they have done what they have done. Planet O R J E. <laughs> facts, bro. Facts. And this is the way it is out here, man. It's actually kind of quite crazy, bro. It's quite it's quite crazy that people have so much going on. People have so many things in their life where they can't sit back and actually look at this matrix for what it is and understand how to beat this game. Everybody knows this is the game of life, but yet ain't nobody sitting back trying to figure out how to beat the game. And I just sat there and told you how to beat the game as a man. As a man, you could go anywhere you want, bro. You're the you're a man. Bro, you're a man. You can go anywhere, okay? And conquer. There's so many other places that you have never been. But we as men, okay, are told that, you know, these are the things that we need to do. And this is why so many men are miserable. This is why so many men have gone through the things that they have gone through because they believe in this opinion instead of, like I said, figuring out this game of life and understanding that every single thing that we see in the society is sexualized for a reason, because that is the key to destroying anyone's life, men and women alike. Okay. And as a man, you have the power, bro. Once you say no to that energy and cultivate that energy, bro, you can go anywhere. You can, you'll have, a man is going to have many a women chasing him, bro. A man can impregnate many of women. A woman can only get pregnant once, okay? A man spreads the seed, okay? That is the facts, all right? But instead, here in the States, like I told you, this program, this farm, if you will, suppresses the man just like they suppress the woman we're both suppressed all right but we get tied down okay we get depleted and we get derailed on what it is that we're supposed to do in life and that's just wrong and this is why retention is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because more men are actually getting to these long streaks and they're seeing you know that the, the other side of this fence is way better okay and they're choosing to go this route. And this is where you get these men who become these entrepreneurs with creative sexual energy who go out throughout the world and create all sorts of amazing things. They travel everywhere. 
They have the power of creation. They can create any lifestyle that they want. They can create any business that they want. Okay. So just remember, guys, that everything that we're being showed is being showed for, for a reason. Okay. And to escape this, this problem that we're having here in society as a man, you're going to have to learn to conquer your lower self. You're going to have to learn to conquer your lust because that's the number one tool that they're using against you. How are you doing, Hawk? Good to see you in here tonight, brother. Insight says, if someone isn't retaining, they can't keep up with this conversation. Facts. Absolute facts. And that's why you will hear me, Insight, uh, repeat a lot of things that I say. Like, I literally will repeat a lot of things that I say. Okay. And I do that on purpose because I know people don't always catch what it is that I say. Sometimes things can go over people's head, but it's actually really simple. Okay. It's really simple to sit back, get in a quiet room and think about everything this matrix has constructed for you as a man and understand that the only thing that you needed to do this whole time was control your lower self and your sexual energy. And you would be living a totally different life. Okay a totally different life. All right. And that's on everything. And you know it. And I know it just for the simple fact, like I said, would you be in a relationship right now? Would you be with your significant other right now? Would you would have married the opposite sex, put a $5,000 ring on her finger. Okay. Get go, going half on, 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 on the house, on the cars, all of that. If there wasn't SEX involved in the equation? And the answer is no, which, again, like I said, again, shows you who is the weaker problem. The man is the weaker problem. The man has the problem with controlling his sexual energy. And this is why he's in those situations, because if he has not got to the pinnacle that he wanted to get in life, everything else he's done is just a pure distraction. Hawk says, bro, women drain the man of his seed. She has the control. Facts. Facts, Hawk. And I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. The moment that she, that starts happening in a relationship with a female, okay? The moment that starts happening in a relationship with a female, what ends up else happening? The control starts, right? Once she sees that you have lost control, I'm just telling you the way it is. And this is, I'm not clowning anybody. This ain't no disrespect to nobody. Fair game. You're fair game. Okay. I'm not hating. I'm just putting it out there. This is fair game, bro. Once you start doing that, the woman is going to see that you are weak. Okay. And this is where the manipulation and this is where all the control comes into play. Every man that has a ring on his finger, every man that's in a relationship is going to be subjected to this okay this is the way it works all right so if you were to just open your eyes and you realize that bro that the minute you start indulging in that with a female okay this is this is what's going to transpire okay it's going to turn into a control issue okay you are now weak bro okay now what's going to happen is she's going to start using that against you. All right. She's going to start withholding. She's going to stop giving it to you. And then what happens to you when that starts to happen? You start to lose yourself anymore, right? You start to go all out. You start to lose your frame, lose your character. Okay. And this is where you have now lost yourself as a man. And this is sadly where most men are. And like I said, what ends up happening is you, you're starting to lose character and then she starts losing attraction. OK, I know it's a B.I.T.C.H. the way this works, guys, but it's life. This is the way it works. OK, she starts losing the attraction and then you get discarded. OK, now you have a whole heap of mess in your life that you have not, not even a clue on where to begin, how to fix it. OK, but if you were a man who practiced the art of retaining his seed, sexual transmutation, you would understand when you get into these situations, you know exactly what to fall back on to get yourself back on the horse and put yourself back in the race, okay? But most men out here, 
get into these relationships because they do not have wood control. Okay. And because they do not have wood control, all right, they end up going into these relationships with their addictions, never facing their demons. Okay. And they end up losing themselves. All right. And relationships end up being their detriment. Okay. I've seen it time and time again. Just like I said today, I saw many examples of this today at work where men just look like they were just defeated. Okay. Trying to make a female happy over Valentine's Day. All right. Instead, if he just realized the power that he had, okay, he would never even be in that situation. Yeah, bro, it's crazy how men are brainwashed to pray to pray for romance, soulmates, etc. But God doesn't care about your animalistic desires being met. Facts, bro. That is the absolute truth. And this is why we have the situation that we're in. This is this is free will. You have your choice to do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay. But what my responsibility is is to enlighten you on what it is that you do not see, what you do not know, what you do not understand, okay? So many men are working so hard, putting so much effort into chasing these things, you know, being a hunter and gatherer, all right? Being that man that has the job that creates all this money, and then he's inviting this situation into his life that ends up literally taken away from every single thing that he's worked hard for. Okay. It's set him back. All right. And again, the constructs of marriage and all that, like I said, that was created by a man and we know why it's just another tool that they use. Okay. And since that, you know, that this is set up, okay. To more directly impact a man, what decision are you making as a man you're not making the correct one you're thinking with your small head because if you understood that sex did not come with the marriage or the relationship would you be in that relationship so essentially what you're paying for and women know this okay women know this bro okay is the sex okay you're paying for your weaknesses you're paying for your addictions all right, and this is what's going to get you into trouble every single time, guys. Our sole purpose is our sole purpose. Facts, bro. Facts, bro. <laughs> Facts, all right? We as men have been conditioned to be a part of this programming and this society, okay? But the minute that you understand that all you have to do is cut off the one thing that they're using against you, the one thing they're using against you, okay, which is sexuality, which is lust. Once you identify that, and I mean you really identify that, you're not, it's not just sitting up here, listen to me, you know, in a lecture talking to you about the benefits. No, once you really identify that in your head, and it sets in, you start to see every single thing that's going on. Okay. And you really start to understand that all of these things that you're doing are stopping you from achieving the goals and being who it is that you want it to be. I'm not telling you at once in a blue moon, you can't be intimate, but we're talking about something you'd maybe, if you were a man on his mission that you would maybe be doing maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, okay, at the max, if you're somebody who is retaining his energy, bro, and trying to transmute it to his higher good, okay, so where would the rest of that energy be coming from in the relationship? You'd have so much more that you would have to deal with, so how are you going to even sit here and tell me that you could even accomplish the things that you truly wanted to accomplish with all your undistractive energy, okay, going towards that goal? You could not do it in any of these situations that I have explained. And this is what I'm telling you. So understand, here's something for food for thought. I want you to eat it up. I want you to let it marinate for a little bit. And I don't want you to digest it. And I want you to ask yourself, okay, 
Do you want to settle? Do Are you comfortable where it is that you are in your life? Is this what you want to be at the end of your life? Or you want to be one of these people, bro, who actually go out and conquer the world? You haven't been anywhere as a man, okay? The minute you decide to take all this energy and put it within yourself, bro, you're going to be able to be an amazing person. You're going to be able to create so much currency for yourself. And you're going to be able to explore and go do all the things that you possibly want to do in life with nothing holding you back or anchoring you down, okay? I want you to really weigh on that, all right? You are free, bro, okay? And there is a whole world out there. There are so many different countries that you can go to. Do not let this place trick you, shame you into thinking this is what you have to do because you were brought up in this crap hole, okay? This is not what you have to do, okay? You need to go see the world, okay? And you need to go after your desires. And that's the fact, okay? And if you haven't done that, then you have cut yourself short of life. And it's going to be nobody else's blame but your own, okay? Because you did not do the first thing that they should have taught every single man, which is the art of sexual discipline, seed retention, you would have a completely different outlook. You wouldn't be in no relationships. I promise you that. You definitely wouldn't be in no marriages. I promise you that. But for the simple fact that men weigh this one little thing, okay, this one little thing, bro, they weigh this one little thing so much weight in a row, uh, on their lives, they end up letting this one little thing hinder them on who they're truly supposed to be. And that is sad. What do you think about parasocial relationships? You know, Korean root, I don't even know what that is. Let me look up that definition real quick, bro, because I, I never heard of that. It'll just take me one second. Parasocial relationships are one-sided relationships when one person extends emotional energy, interest, and time, and the other party, the, pers the persona is completely unaware of the other's existence. Wow. <laughs> wow. What do I think about that? Well, if you want to be quite honest, bro, that sounds like that's already happening, okay? That sounds like it's already happening, especially like I said, when men have lost themselves in this system and they decide to, you know, fall into the constructs. All right. And think that they need to be settled down and they need to be having their energy drained. I believe that that happens. OK, because what end up happening is, like I said, once you've lost yourself as a man, you become unattractive to your partner. And this is why most of these relationships and most of these marriages end the way they do. OK, because they become one sided. All right. And it became one sided because you didn't understand that you were being trapped, whether intentionally or unintentionally. The fact of the matter is, as a man, you become trapped. You are not yourself. You do not have the energy, bro. All right. To go on and do the things that you want to do. You don't have the focus. You don't have the drive. OK, you have now become complacent. OK, and when you come complacent as a man, you settle. OK, and I don't know too many lot king of the jungles, bro, that settle and become complacent. OK, all I know is they conquer. They go around and they they conquer until their life is, is, is at an end. And that's the way a man should be doing that. But as said, if you go look around the country, go look around any other country, you guys. I challenge you. Go look around any other country and see that they're doing the opposite that what we're doing here as men, okay? They're doing the complete opposite. It seems like we're the only country, bro, that is falling under this philosophy, all right? And the way things are ran. And I'm telling you, this is why we have a society of such a weak men, bro, because you're draining, you're de depleted literally, all right? Literally. 
And if if war or any major thing like that was to happen, we'd be e- easily conquered. And I love how most men try to tell me that it doesn't hinder their energy or power that much. Well, I challenge you to do this. Next time you have intercourse, next time you spank one off to corn hub, okay, I want you to go put 315 pounds on the bench immediately after you've done this and see how strong you are, okay? I beg to differ, okay, because it is true. And if you keep doing this, you become more and more deficient. And then you have to think about all these other factors that you have as well. You have the health realm. You have your diet realm, okay? You're being weakened in so many more aspects of your life that you have no idea. Most men are drinking. Most men are alcoholics. Most men smoke, okay? There are so many other factors, bro, all right? So in in fact, this is what's happening to you as a man. You have to face the facts, okay? And it's time for us to wake up in 2024, period. Play with fire, you get burnt. Sexual energy is nothing but heat. Facts, bro. It is nothing but heat, bro. It is nothing but heat. And I'm telling you, this heat can can change your whole life around in just a matter of a year. I promise you that. If any man was just to take this serious and get have enough motivation, he has to be, it's, the sad part is most people have to be hurt, beyond hurt. Most people have to, to hit rock bottom before they find some kind of motivation to completely change your lives. And this is sad, okay? This is the same thing with I, I tried to help people on my health channel. I try to tell people about their health every single day on what they're eating, okay? But people, unfortunately, bro, have to hit rock bottom. People, unfortunately, bro, have to get sick before they understand what kind of fire that they're playing with, okay? And it's, it's sad. It's, it's an unfortunate, okay? But the, the, the least thing that we can do as men is to spread this knowledge, okay? Help other men out, Okay. Because even if, you know, five or six men understand and get it, that's five or six lives that we're changing. And then those other four four or five men are going to go out and change four other five other men's lives. It's the way it works. Okay. But without no knowledge, okay, there is no solution. All right. So we have to put the information out here for people to understand. A man who has conquered his lower self cannot be conquered. I love that, bro. I love that, bro. And that's how I walk around every day, okay? That's how I walk around every single day, bro, okay? I cannot cap to you. That's how I walk around every single day, man. And it's not being cocky, okay? It's not me thinking better of myself. I just know that it ain't going to be just any woman that's going to be able to take my energy anymore. It's not happening, bro. Okay, I'm not going out to the club and looking to get one off. I'm not doing any of that, bro. Okay, it's not going to work like that. Okay, and when it when I when I decide to come off of it, or if I decide to come off of it, it's not going to be some something that I'm going to be indulging in. Like I said, maybe once a month because I'm on my mission and my journey. Maybe, okay, maybe. I didn't say I was going to do it. I'm just saying maybe. I want you to think on how I'm thinking as a retainer, as a serious retainer, if I were to do that, okay, we're talking, that's how much energy I'm only giving out, okay, and that's the kind of energy that you need to retain to be able to go where it is that you want to go, point blank, period, okay, you're not going to be able to do it in no relationship, you're just not, keep keep kidding yourself, keep kidding yourself, okay, you're not going to be able to do it, and if that's not what you want to do, that's fine, because I'm not mad at you, But if you want to know the reason why you might not be able to get to where it is that you really want to get in life, you know why. In ancient India, the boys as young as eight years old were separated from the girls to practice brahmacharya. Tell them, bro. But even in India doesn't practice this anymore except a few yogis. Facts, bro. It's because most of the people are looking in on America, okay? Bro, America for a long time, I don't know about now, but America for a long time was 
had eyes on us. People were copying the, the, the norms and the cultures that Americans have created. That's why so many people come here. That's why so many people want to come here. They come here, bro. And what ends up happening is they end up getting affected with this shit. Okay. And now what you have is you have this all over the world, not in all places. I'm just saying the, the more major countries that have more modern technology, okay, are copying these lifestyles that Americans have created. Okay. And it's spread like a virus and a wildfire and people are getting affected left and right. Okay. But there's places around the world, like I told you, where the numbers are so over uh, out of balance, where there's just so many more women than there is men. There's places where men only practice this too, as well as India is like you said. Okay. But the simple fact of the matter is bro, the simple fact of the matter is despite what everybody else is doing, what the question is, what are you doing? The question is, what do you want to do? The question is, are you living the life that you want to live? Because again, it's not about everybody at the end of the day. It's not about me. It's about you. Okay. What I'm strictly doing is I'm being an example of what it looks like when somebody is holding this energy. Okay. And this is why these type of things are appealing because you're seeing somebody in the flesh in the real life. All right. That is walking this journey that is showing you a completely different person than this person was before years ago. Okay. And the person here now is on a journey. Okay. And he's serious about his journey. He's serious about getting to where it is that he wants to get in life. All right. And understanding that we don't have much time. Tomorrow isn't promised. And every day that you sit back and you got your hands between your legs playing with those nasty, stanky balls, instead of using that energy, bro, to march forward, bro, and create a life, a one in a lifetime shot, a one in a lifetime opportunity, bro, to be truly who it is that you want to be because you can do this because everybody has this power. What are you doing? Why are you wasting time? Okay. Because like I said, you're not promised tomorrow. All right. You're not promised the next five years. And I guarantee you, most of us have not got to where it is that we want to be or done what we want to do. And I'm one of those people who's sitting here telling you that I am on that journey and I'm not going to stop till I get there. Okay. And if I do have a pit stop, I told you. I'm not one of these dudes that's going to be indulging and anchoring myself down to this, bro. I would have to have, you know, the, the sky open up and the most perfect female walk down before I would anchor myself down knowing what it is that I'm trying to conquer and what it is I'm trying to accomplish. Okay. And you should feel the same way. Women are the earthly bodily kingdom and she knows when she's a man. She knows she knows when a man has become weak to her flesh. Facts. And this is I'm not downplaying the women, bro. Okay? I'm not downplaying the women at all. Okay? It's just it's something natural, okay? It's just something that she's supposed to do. Okay? I remember in my live stream I told you guys, you know, seed retention in women, bro. Bro, this is the most high checking you. This is the most high, bro. Okay. Letting you make the decision that you want to make in your life. Okay. Because I told you they're here to correct us when we fall off. Okay. She's, she's there, literally there to wake you up. But most guys don't wake up. Okay. They don't, they, they become content because it's a mother effort, bro. When you have no seed in your balls, you're not you're you're not the person that you're supposed to be, bro. You have no confidence, you have no drive, okay. You have no focus, bro. Okay, you don't keep capping to yourself, keep laughing and joking. You're withering away, bro. Okay. Instead of you know, like I said, if you're not rich, if you're not, you know, one of these people who are leading masses of men who are educating and, and helping men improve their lives. You're not one of these people, you know what I mean? Who are writing books and on audio books 
and doing something majorly of that status, which all men have inside of them, because all of us are the same. This is why you can't get mad at no other man in the world for being in the position that he's in, because I guarantee you at some point he used the transmutation of this sexual energy, okay, and the frustrations of the world to drive himself to greatness. And this is the whole point. Bonafide Good says, I look around in public and every man looks soulless, bro. When I tell you that's what I saw today, when I tell you that's what I saw today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close with this one last thing that I saw, bro. So I saw men who messed up already. Okay. And I already knew what they were going to go through. I already knew what they're going to experience when their wife, when their wife or their girlfriend gets home. There was dudes that forgot Valentine's Day. OK, there were dudes that forgot, you know, you know, his, his girl's, you know, anniversary. OK, now when I look at this, let's say I'm looking at this through my through a retainer's eyes. OK, I'm not looking this through a man out there who's got depleted balls because he's going to see this totally different than I do. OK, but I'm looking at this as a retainer. I'm looking at here's this man who probably been working his butt off. I'm not making an excuse for him or anybody else. Okay, let me get that straight. I'm not making an excuse for him. I'm just telling you what I think. Okay, so here's this man who's probably working his butt off. All right, he's trying to do everything right. Okay, he's probably got children. You know, he's probably got responsibilities. He's got so much things going on in his life. I mean, he probably got a crazy baby mama chasing him. You know, he's probably got all these crazy different things going on in his life, right? And because he decided to anchor himself down, because he decided to lock himself up in a relationship when he had not ascended to the height that he wanted to send in his life, what's ended up happening to him is he's now going to endure all of these problems that come with the choices that he made, okay? And the choices that he made was to be involved in an emotional roller coaster, okay? Now, you got you to gotta add the fact that you have depleted balls as a man. OK, now you have to carry and support a completely different energy. OK, that energy is going to put him on an emo emotional roller coaster. OK, now he's he's arguing, he's fighting, he's losing his character, he's losing sleep. OK, he's losing his frame because we all know because we've all been in relationships. When she gets mad at you, you're going to do whatever it takes to try to, you know, make her happy or try to fix that problem. OK, and we all know how nasty of a toxic cycle that can be when you start, you know, trying to fix those issues. So my point is this. Here is these men choosing to do these things. OK, choosing to live these lifestyles. OK, and they don't understand their their, you know, the process that is going to happen to them as a result of their decisions. OK, and this is where the enlightening point comes in. Have you got to that point that you want to got in life? If you haven't, then this is fine. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. OK, but I just want to open your eyes and enlighten you that there is a whole new world out there that a man, a king is supposed to explore. OK, I'm not telling you you can't have pit stops here and there. OK, what I'm trying to explain to you is you have no clue on what it is that you're missing out on and your rewards come with holding your seed. Your rewards come with transmutation, this sexual energy and becoming your best version, becoming the light for the world to see. OK, becoming that one percent man. OK, and being able to conquer everything that it is that you could possibly want and women are going to come with that. So all I want you guys to do is at the end of the day, see that this is a different route that you can take as a man instead of taking the one that society has given to you. OK, so it's time to wake up, guys. I appreciate you guys for coming in here tonight. I just wanted to chat with you real quick. I didn't mean to, to go off on a tangent like this, but listen, I have to break down things in order for you to see them. Because like I said, most of us don't have eyes to see yet, but eventually when you do have eyes to see, I want you to understand that you have many, many choices in the life of a man. 
Okay. I just want to make sure that you make the right one. So I appreciate you guys for coming in here tonight. I'm going to talk with you guys on the next one. I love you guys. You guys stay safe, man. Peace, brothers. About you, and they told me things, but my mind didn't change. And I still feel the same. What's a life with no fun? Please don't be so ashamed. I've had mine, you've had yours. We both know, we know they won't get you like I will. My only wish is I die real. Cause that truth hurts, and those lies heal. And you can't sleep thinking that he lies still. So you cry still, tears all in a pillowcase. Big girls all get a little taste out, pushing me away so I can a space out. Dealing with a heart that I didn't break, I'll be there for you, I will care for you. I keep thinking you just don't know. Trying to run from that, say you're done with that on your face, girl, it just don't show. When you're ready, just say you're ready. When all the baggage just ain't as heavy and the party's over, just don't forget me. We'll change the pace and we'll just go slow. You won't ever have to worry. You won't ever have to hide. You've seen all my mistakes.